Welcome and welcome back. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Um, today we got a kitchen knife or uh, Old Hickory, um, Ontario Knife Company, OKC. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. They've had kitchen knives. Um, they've been a, it's a, a company that's been around for a long time. I think uh, they've been making knives for over 130 years, kitchen Ooh. cutlery knives. Um, and uh, they actually came out with this Old Hickory brand in the 1920s. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys have seen them. If you, if you haven't, this is a budget um, brand, kitchen kitchen line, or just a budget brand. Even even their newer stuff today is very affordable, very obtainable yeah, very, stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. But this this line here, the Old Hickory, is just meat and potatoes. It's just your basic stuff. So um, real quick, uh, why don't you tell us a little something about the knife? Okay, so this particular design is based off of a Horace Kephart design called the Kephart. Uh, blade, but see, our this one has got a bit more belly than your traditional Kephart design. Um, Kephart was a guy from Pennsylvania, and he just ended up making all of these uh, different knives, all for food prep and sort Kay. of stuff, all camp and kitchen related stuff. They even have ice picks. Uh -huh. This one weighs 5.1 ounces with everything. I mean, because it comes with a sheath. And so you put the two together and it weighs 5.1 ounces. By itself, it's 3.5. All right, we got a blade length around four inches there. You got about four inch cut and surface there. So, uh, yeah, so that goes all the way back to the... Um, to a handguard, which is really cool because a lot of these kitchen knives that you see um, usually don't offer this type of handguard there. Um, and usually, uh, you know, that's usually when you get your first accident is in the <laughs> kitchen with these old school knives because as you see here, the handle. It's really smooth. They put like some type of bull nose or, yes, they, 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 they rounded it off. So no hot spots at all. Yeah. As you see there. Very comfortable. And uh, even though it is kind of squarish, it's still really comfortable. Guys. Yeah, the actual handle actually looks longer than the blade. Actually, it is longer <laughs> than the blade, so that's kind of a turn off to me. I, I like when the blade actually at least the same size as the as the handle. Um, let's see here. Definitely. Just, um, as you see there, full tang. So that's Just a plus. Like a lot of the old hickory knives are though, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of them are. Most of them are all full tang. We got some older. She has an old hickory knife here. Yeah, that's been a, in her family for a long time. An um, old, old one. Yeah. This right is going here. to put that here, and. Uh, this is basically a utilitarian knife, you know. It, it's been used for only food prep the entire time of its life until my parents died and I got a hold of it. And then I started using it for box cutting and stuff like that. So it isn't really in my kitchen anymore, but my mom and my dad used it in the kitchen and the occasional time they camped. Yeah, so this this thing's old. So yeah, this is this is the type of knife that your grandparents, your great great parents, your great 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 grandparents <laughs> might have used. Um, like I said, they've been in business for over 130 years for um, making um, kitchen knives. So uh, it's 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 cool to see them continuing because uh, OKC is a great brand. Um, as you see here, this one has the light the light wood handles. This is made of the, both these are made of high carbon steel. Um, that's why that's just rust on there. It's not like dirt or nothing on there. As old as this is, it just, you know, that's the patina it has. And we don't use this for food prep, as she says. Uh, we use this just, she uses it just for utility things, um, breaking down boxes and stuff like that. But we'll put that aside there. And uh, as you see, it has like brass rivets on it. You got brass pins on it. So uh, that's a cool little style factor. I mean, it's just meat and potatoes. Um, you got a, you know, a brown finish on it. You got the full flat grind. That's that's a plus. Um, you usually don't see that with these um, these camp knives. With this no no you don't usually don't see it with this OKC kitchen knives. You usually see them with like a saber grind. Uh, so this is going to be a really really slicing knife, and we'll we'll put it to the test, and we'll just show you guys how thin she can get um, tomatoes. I mean, you see the blade uh -oh. stock on there. Yeah. This is uh this is uh ten seventy five, um high carbon. Um, they old hickory makes some in ten ninety five. So this is going to be. Not as, not as, uh, it's not going to hold an edge as long as, uh, the 1095, but it's going to be a little bit easier to sharpen. So that's one of the benefits of this. Um, here, you want to hold this? Yep. Okay. I'll show you guys the sheath here real quick. It comes with, a, a leather sheath with most, most kitchen knives don't come with a sheath. Um, you know, so that, that's a plus that it comes with a sheath. So if you want to use this at camp, you know, a camp kitchen, more like a gaucho barbecue knife, um, they're going to throw in a sheath with it. Um, here it is, just standard leather. 
Um, no, no, just just a regular belt loop right there, or you could slide it right in your pocket, however you want to do it. But it comes with, let's see here. Uh, yeah, you a see it comes plastic with, insert. Comes with a little plastic insert in there, um, and it has the little drain hole, as you guys can see down there. One stitching all the way down. I mean, it's just, it's just meat and potatoes, this sheath too. So it's kind of cool they threw it in there. Um, they list this knife not as like a cap part. This is a cap part design. But, um, and that, that's the reason why, we, uh, why, uh, why, we're, why we're showing it. This is actually the only cap part design that we have. And uh, I think right now with all the cap parts out there, design knives, I think SE uh, might make one. I think K bar might make one. This is going to be your cheapest option. Yeah. So um, if you're if you just want to experience um, the design and uh, play around with design, this is a great budget option to go ahead and do that with. As you see here, the blade stock is very thin, goes down to nothing. Yeah. And uh, it actually flexes a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. So it's like machete, like a, like a machete. It's like a tiny machete. Yeah. And I'll hold it up to a, a, a Mora just to show you the. Um, the, uh, the, the 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 similarities in in, in, in the two knives because they're they're priced right around the same uh price range here let's um I'll put that back down here and okay. I'll put the magazine here this is the Smoky Mountain Knife Works magazine uh for uh October and this is the knife right here it's, they list it as small fish and game yeah small fish and game for twenty four ninety five so you're getting all that for twenty four ninety five here's a you know, been in company for over 130 years. Um, yeah, and it's in the 1075, which they make things in the 1095. And everything here is budget lines, all entry level stuff. Um, but it's like, good stuff. Yeah, it's good it's stuff. It's really good stuff. Like he says, it's just meat and potatoes stuff, people. It's it's all high carbon. So, uh, you, you know, this is it's going to be super easy to sharpen out in the field. Um, where it's, where technically this, this, this knife, I think, is meant to be. They list it as uh, fish and small game. So, um, which I don't know about fish. I mean, it's going to have to be a really tiny, small fish to flay anything with this. Yeah, uh, you know, I with was a four-inch blade, that's yeah. But I could see, you know, processing animals um, with with this with this type of uh, design here. You know what this design reminds me of? Uh -huh. um, you remember those old GI? Um, what do you call them? The mess kits. Yeah. The, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That looks like the 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 mess kit stuff. Yeah. Uh, with, where you would have like a spork, and then sometimes they'd give you a knife. Mm -hmm. This is just a little bit pointier than that knife you would get. It, exactly. Back in the, in the, the, the mess kits that they give you in the military, the, uh, the U.S. military. Yeah. Um, um, they give you the spork and they give you the pan plate and they give you the knife. This reminds me of the governmental issued Issue? things. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the kitchen. So it does. Def definitely. I mean, it's going to work, you know, the buttering, buttering biscuits or, <laughs> or cutting sandwiches or whatever you want to do. Make a heck of a steak knife. Butter you your biscuit. Um, yeah, the handle is really smooth. You're not going to get any type of hot spot in there. And uh, what's cool about these knives uh, being wooden like that, it leaves you room to customize it. And uh, this is just an example here of what I'm talking about. Um, this is a knife I made by Maximum Japan. Um, and uh, I was just playing around with my dad's um, engraver that he has. We he, we just fill around drinking some beers in the garage. And uh, um, he pulled out his engraver. And I said, hey, man, let me just play with that a little bit. And I just made a little design like that in the wood pattern. That's my that's our dog's name, our, our, our chihuahua's name. <laughs> You've probably seen him in one of our other videos. Uh, his name's Dino. So, um, yeah, I just, just playing around with it. So there's that. Um, so that's cool. You can do a little, uh, you can do a lot of personalization, customization. You've if, got a whole blank canvas on the one side. Yeah, pretty much. Want to hold this in. <laughs> yeah. And what's cool is that, um, about that, um, when, when you do sheet this uh, like this, that black, that, that, that side right here is blank. So it doesn't say old hickory. You could put whatever you want there. That's Whether, really cool. It's like the open L's. If you're into like customize, you know, customization, mm -hmm. um, wood burning, um, as you see here, it's smooth. So if you want to put a little bit of texturing on it, you, you know, whatever, you, let your let your let your mind, you know, do whatever you want with it. Yep. But, uh, let your mind go. Yeah, get some fun. Oh, here's. I mean, because there's such budget friendly options, you can take the time to do that. You know, fiddle around with it, make it yours. Yeah, just a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, might as well. I mean, it's only twenty five bucks, so <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, you can get a full set of uh, the uh, Ontario Kitchen Knives for around $50. Just a little size comparison. Ah! Uh, here's my... Endura. Endura. But for, for $25, I think this is a, the cheapest cat part out there and made in America. You know, like I said, it's meat and potatoes. You got the pin construction, so... Um, but as old as that one that she has there, there's yeah. no type of uh, rattle or nothing like that. Here, I want to hold the camera one more yeah. time. Um, let's see here real Got quick. It. Let's show you guys the blade stock beside you. Actually, let's set, show, show them the size. 
a little bit. Yeah, almost the same size. And then here, blade stock. Uh, Looks like the Mora might be a little thicker at yeah. the end, definitely. Which is kind of, yeah, at the end, definitely. You see the Looks tip. Looks like they narrow the tip out on the Ontario knife. Yeah. Um, and it, you see the fit and finish on the Mora knife. It's really, The finish on the top isn't really that well. Um, but, man, look at that high polish. That's yeah. ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, the grind on this, you're going to have some grind lines going um, vertical. Um, satin finishes. It isn't tumbled or stonewashed or nothing like that. Um, this spine, as you see here, you see the, how it's glowing right there? Yeah. So it's rounded. It's not sharp at all. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how striking a fire is going to be. But like I said, this, this knife is made for, uh, if you want to customize it, go ahead. You know, it's $25. You know, you put yeah. that uh, flat spot you need there if you want to use it for a striking camping tool for yep. your fire start needs. But uh, figured we'd show you guys this one today. I know you guys are familiar with uh, OKC and uh, Old Hickory and uh, just how good these are. So um, they are really good knives. You guys are looking for a Kephart design uh, type knife and don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Here's a here's a great little option with uh, and it's American made full tang. So I mean, give it a shot. Yeah, we haven't taken outside or did, done nothing like that with it, but we will do some tabletop slicing right now for you guys. Yep. So I'll go ahead and put all this stuff here. I'll, all right. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's do a piece of paper. Okay. Say, aren't you gonna cut paper? Yeah. All right. I feel good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there it is. So it'll cut paper. Let's try some string real quick. Uh -oh. Paracord. Ooh. Oh yeah, no problem. That, I like the sound that makes. <laughs> yeah, that was no problem. Let's try another piece real quick. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, there it is. No like jimping that. or nothing like that. Actually, the finish they did on it was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, the more I look at it and handle it, the more I can appreciate this knife. Um, in the magazines, it really doesn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't really speak to me, or it's not like I want to. I, 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 wanna... I gotta have it exactly. <laughs> but uh, the more I actually hold it, and the more I compare it to other things, the more I can see where that twenty five dollars is. You're, you're getting, you're, you're, you're getting a good deal there. Yeah. All right, let's try some uh, some um, tomato slice. I'm gonna go ahead and slide all that. Okay. Just going to pull that out of the way. All right. And then I'll have her do her thing. Got a tomato today. We figured uh, as thin as this is, we'll, yeah, we'll rock that. Yeah, as thin that. as it is, Maybe we're going to try it. See? Real, real quick. Let's try some slicing. Okay. Let's cut the tip off of the tomato. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. You like that? Yeah. Wow. I Wow. Look at how thin I'm able to get this. Very Look nice. Look at that. Oh, this is just lovely. You can just... Look at how thin this is. I mean, just almost as thin as a blade. Wow, you can see right through it. <laughs> Ghost tomato. <laughs> oh man, this would be amazing with anything. I mean, but I mean, if it cuts a tomato like this, yeah, this is just phenomenal. Yeah, I should have no problem with meat or, yeah. or whatever. But the fact that it cuts the tomato, that's really cool. I'm not sure if we're gonna take this and do bushcraft work with it. Yeah. I know the original cat parts were kind of like. You know, Bushcraft, like utilitarian camp knives. They're but uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna do that type of stuff with this knife. It's just, it's thin. Not saying it can't do it. It's just uh, yeah. I mean, cause look, we might keep this one in the kitchen drawer. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, this is nifty. I'm amazed. So anyway, if y'all like sharp objects, knives, scissors, anything sharp and pointy, you should check us out. Yeah, don't, if you liked the video, um, don't forget to like button and uh, subscribe, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks.